OK, so in this video, we're going to calculate the Taylor polynomial for five terms at the point zero for the function 1 over 1 minus x. And as always, always remember to find the three important things to remember when you're trying to calculate the Taylor polynomial. So the degree n, which is five terms, so n is five. So that's the first thing that needs to be important to remember. The point a, in this case point zero, so it's at zero, which we're calculating it for. And a function, of course, which is 1 over 1 minus x. And then you've got your generic formula for Taylor polynomial, which is here. And basically what you will do is you will substitute the n's for 5's and the a's for zeros. So in this function here, this tn of x, which is the generic name for Taylor polynomial of 5 degrees, so t5 of x. And then the function at the value of 0. Then the value of the first derivative of 0 divided by 1 factorial. Then x minus a, well that's, in this case it's just going to be x, because x minus 0 to the power of 1, just x to the power of 1. Then we've got the second derivative divided by 2 factorial, and that's calculated at 0 as well. And x minus a, that will also be x squared, and so on and so on. But also remember the pattern in Taylor polynomials. You've got a 2, a 2, and a 2, 3, 3, and 3. 4, 4, and 4, and 5, 5, and 5. So that's the n values basically, as we've got here at the end, which is the generic uh, formula for the stages of the Taylor polynomial. So next thing to do, we need to differentiate the function. So differentiating one, differentiate one uh, divided by one minus x. So we're going to differentiate it five times and calculate the derivative for the value zero. So we start off. We've got to draw a nice little table here. I'm going to show you a nice easy shortcut way of differentiating 1 over 1 minus x. And then to calculate the function at 0, it's pretty straightforward. You just plug in a 0 and calculate it. So the value, uh, the function is 1 over 1 minus x, and the value at 0 is just 1 over 1. 1 minus 0 is 1. So that's 1. So that's straightforward to calculate the first line. Then the first derivative, now what you've got to imagine is here, this 1 minus x is to the power of minus 1. And when it's minus 1, you've got, uh, it's in the denominator. So therefore, when you increase the power, you increase the power because you're going up a negative. But if, this a, if this was a positive, you would decrease it by 1. So imagine that's a minus 1. So 1 over 1 minus x to minus 1, and then take the derivative of the denominator, which is minus 1. 1 minus x, the derivative of minus x is minus 1. The derivative of 1 is 0. So 0 is 0 minus 1. So 1 over 1 minus x squared is what we get. So you basically got a minus 1 here and a 1. So that's minus 1. 1 times minus 1 is minus 1. Multiply it by the derivative of the bottom, which is minus 1. Minus 1 times minus 1 is 1. So therefore, you get the 1 on the top. And then your 1 minus x is then in brackets and then squared, because you're going to increase the power because we're going in negative territory. So effectively, this is 1 divided by 1 minus x squared. is actually 1 minus x to the power of minus 2. So that's how we get to there. So again, using that formula, 1 times minus 2, because that's a, always going to be a minus, so that's minus 2, times your minus 1, minus 2 times minus 1 is plus 2. Then increase the power, because you're going from minus 2 to minus 3, so that's, that's minus 3. Then your next derivative, 2 times 3 is 6, well it's a minus, because the 3 is in the denominator, and then minus 6 times the derivative of minus x, which is minus 1, is plus 6. And then increase your power to the 4. Then it's got 6 times minus 4 is minus 24 times minus 1 is plus 24. So and then we get the 24. 24 times minus 5 is 120. 120, which is what it's going to be, a minus 120, because that's a minus 5. So minus 120 times the minus 1 is plus 120. So then to calculate the values of all these derivatives, Basically, in the denominator, we've got 1 minus 0 squared, 1 minus 0 cubed, 1 minus 0 to the 4, 1 minus 0 to the 5. So all these denominators are all basically 1. Whatever 1 is to the power of anything, 
is always 1. So 1 divided by 1 is 1. So the first derivative is 1. 2 divided by 1 is 2. So that's 2. 6 divided by 1 is 6. And so on. 24. And the fifth one, 120. So then what we do now is we've got the values of all our derivatives. We're just going to plug those values in to the Taylor polynomial formula. And then we end up the first stage. Obviously, we're going to put these, substitute all the a's in. So the f of 0, first derivative of 0, x minus 0. I've left the first one in there so you can see why we've left it down as x squared, x cubed, because we don't want to keep writing the 0. And then now we're going to substitute all these values into our formula. So the fifth derivative is 120. So we'll just substitute a 120 in there. The fourth derivative is 24. So we substitute a 24 in there. Third derivative is 6. So we substitute a 6 in there. And the second derivative is 2. So we substitute a 2 in there. And the value of 0 and the derivative is both 1. So basically we substitute a 1 there and a 1 there. So Let's have a look at what we've got. So we've got t5 of x is 1 plus x plus 2x squared over 2 factorial. And then these are so on and so on. So to see how we got to that, the value at 0 is 1. So that's why we put a 1 there. The first derivative is 1. 1 over 1 factorial times x is x. The second derivative was 2. So 2 divided by 2 factorial basically cancels each other out. And then you just got the x squared. Same with the third derivative, which was 6. So 6 divided by 3 factorial. Well, 3 factorial is 6. So again, these cancel each other out. And you see there's a pattern forming now. Fourth derivative is 24. And 4 factorial is also 24. So these will also cancel out. And the same with the fifth one, 120. 5 factorial is 120, because 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 is 120. So again, these cancel out. So this makes a nice little uh, neat formula. So basically, we probably imagine going all the way along here, plus x to the 6, plus x to the 7, plus x to the 8, again, improving the accuracy of our Taylor polynomial each time. So just to simplify that up, we can just write it as this. t5 of x equals 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the 4 plus x to the 5. So now what we want to do is just to check our Taylor polynomial against the graph of the original function 1 divided by 1 minus x. So here it is. So this orange line is our Taylor polynomial. And we was asked to calculate it at 0. So this is the point we're interested in here. And this dotted line is the graph of 1 divided by 1 minus x. And also you see it goes here because it will go off with an asymptote at 1 because you can't have 1. Uh, as a value of x, it would be undefined. So 1 divided by 1 minus 1, which would be 1 over 0. So that's why the, the line never touches this plus 1 sign. And where we were to calculate at 0, it's very accurate. So here it uh, touches it, and it goes all the way up here. And as it approaches 1, it starts to peel away a little bit. But as it goes down to negative values, they tend to go off in different directions. The 1 over 1 minus x tends to converge to 0. And our Taylor polynomial tends to diverge down to negative infinity. So, but at the point we was interested in, it is very accurate. So we conclude that our Taylor polynomial is very good. It's accurate. And that's your answer. All right. Thanks for watching. And any comments, leave below. Thanks very much.